On November 13, 1982, a boxing match took place that changed many lives and forever altered the face of the boxing world as we know it. The bout went down in infamy as one of the most tragic events to ever happen in the ring. We are talking about the duel between South Korean boxer Duck Koo Kim and famous Italian-American fighter Ray Mancini. The words win or die, which Duck Koo Kim wrote on a lampshade in his Las Vegas hotel room before the fight, became prophetic. Ray Mancini, nicknamed Boom Boom, was the WBA lightweight champion of the world, and his match against Kim would be the second defense of his world title. Coming into this fight, he had a record of 24 and 1, having last fought in July when he successfully made his first title defense. Mancini was from a family of boxers, and his father Lenny had been training him since childhood. From an early age, Ray vowed to win a world championship belt for his father, an honor that Lenny had been unable to achieve due to injuries sustained in World War II. He won his first NABF lightweight title against Puerto Rican Jorge Morales in May of 1981. After the ninth round ended, the referee decided that Morales had had enough boxing for the day. You know, this is the next step. To me, this was the world title. You know, there's only one higher, which is the world title, but to me, this is it. And um, I'm going to keep this belt because the world title goes to my father, but I'm going to keep this one. Two months later, he defended his title against the experienced Mexican fighter Jose Luis Ramirez. Ramirez went into the fight with an impressive record of 71 and 4. But in the end, he was bested by the rising star and lost by unanimous decision. In October of the same year, Mancini fought for his first world title. His opponent was Nicaraguan veteran Alexis Arguello, holder of the WBC and the ring lightweight belts. Alexis had already 72 professional fights on his record, with 67 victories. Arguello was a three-time world champion and this was his first defense of his newest title. In the first half of the fight, Boom Boom was able to cause a lot of trouble for Arguello and took the lead on points. But in the second half, Alexis used his greater experience and turned the tide of the fight. In the 14th round, he inflicted the first defeat of Mancini's career by TKO. This fight was chosen by the ring and ESPN as one of the most spectacular fights of the 1980s. Nearly three months later, Ray recovered from the defeat and returned to the ring to score two victories, one of which was a defense of his NABF lightweight title against Julio Valdez by TKO in the 10th round. In May of 1982, Boom Boom fought again for the world title. This time, he defeated Arturo Frias. Almost three months later, Boom Boom defended his title by defeating Ernesto Espana by TKO in the sixth round. With his first defense successfully completed, the next official contender for Ray Mancini's world title was the South Korean boxer, Duck Koo Kim. Duck Koo Kim was born in January of 1959 to a poor family with many children. He grew up fighting on the streets and was known locally as a bully. At the age of 17, Duck Koo took up boxing as an amateur, and the gym soon became his second home. On November 13, 1982, the spectators who filled the stands outside Caesars Palace in Las Vegas expected to see a one-sided fight and a victory by their favorite, Mancini. But Ray himself said in an interview that he was expecting the match to be a tough one. The fight almost entirely took place with the fighters at close range. Neither wanted to concede and continually pushed one another to find a weakness. In the first round, both fighters were active, but Duck Koo Kim was more accurate and took the round due to a great number of significant punches. In the first half of the second round, the South Korean was also more successful, but Ray began to pick up the pace and carried out several successful attacks with hard hook combinations.
In the third round, the fighters traded blows equally, with both having powerful attacks. But overall, Kim's blows seem stronger. The sixth round started with Ray pressing, but Duck Ku stopped him with a pair of good left crosses. Then, at the end of the round, he landed a fast and powerful attack to Ray's body. In the seventh round, both fighters delivered many good strikes, especially to the body, but the round went in Kim's favor when he pinned Mancini near the ropes at the end of the round and brought down a hail of blows. Although Kim was looking good early in the fight, by the 12th round it was clear that Boom Boom Mancini looked fresher than his opponent. His footwork was better and his punches were more accurate. Ray delivered an uppercut to Kim's chest, shocking him and causing him to stumble to one knee. Kim quickly got to his feet before the referee could call a knockdown. Until this fight, Kim had never boxed beyond 12 rounds, and his exhaustion was becoming more apparent. After the bell in the 13th round, Ray pounced on his opponent. Kim could do nothing but defend himself for nearly an entire minute. The end came at the very beginning of the 14th round. When the gong sounded, Mancini headed straight for Kim and landed a sharp left hook. It was abundantly clear that this blow shocked the South Korean boxer. Mancini followed the blow with a right cross to the head that knocked Kim down. Falling, Duck Koo hit his head hard on the floor of the ring. He clung to the ropes and drug himself to his feet but the referee saw that Kim was unstable and called for an end to the fight. With his mother and father, Ellen and Lenny Mancini, and Ray Boom Boom Mancini, I just cannot believe that you expected to get this kind of a fight from this young man. Jim, if I told you I did, you ain't gonna believe me, but I did because I knew I planned on a long fight. Everybody didn't know about it. I saw films. The guy was very, very impressive. Tough, rough, hungry, determined. Those are the worst kind. This kid got a tremendous chin, great, uh, you know, body, uh, body puncher, he's gonna stay in there and I expect a long fight. I expect him going to later rounds. I did. In my mind, I prepared that way, put it that way. A few minutes later, Kim collapsed into unconsciousness and was immediately rushed to the hospital. Neurosurgeons performed an emergency operation to remove a hematoma from the Korean fighter's brain. But all their efforts to save his life were in vain. Kim died four days later without regaining consciousness. Tragically, this was not the only death that resulted from this now infamous match. Four months after that fateful day, Dutku Kim's mother committed suicide. And nearly a year later, still tormented by guilt over Kim's death, Richard Green, the referee for the match, also took his own life. 
Ray Mancini blamed himself for Kim's death as well, and at first wanted to leave the sport. His friends later convinced him to return to boxing, telling him that the outcome of the fight was only a tragic accident. Despite fighting sporadically throughout the rest of the 80s and into the early 90s, Ray Mancini was never the same carefree fighter that the public had known before. After this incident, the various world boxing organizations began to institute reforms to better ensure the safety of the fighters. Fights were changed to a maximum of 12 rounds, and the standing eight count was implemented as a referee judgment call. But perhaps the most important reforms came in the form of more extensive pre-fight medical examinations. Before the Kim Mancini fight, fighters would simply have their blood pressure and heartbeat checked. Since then, before each fight, boxers have been required to have an MRI brain scan, an electrocardiogram, and lung scans. The official weigh-in procedure was also shifted earlier to give the boxers more time to make weight. One of the reasons for Kim's death was attributed to the extreme measures he undertook before the match in order to shed extra pounds. If you enjoyed this video, please drop us a like, leave a comment below, and click the bell to turn on notifications so you won't miss our new videos. Also, if you aren't subscribed yet, please do so, as it really helps us to develop the channel. See you next time in the ring.